Welcome back. Star Lighthouse is a not-for-profit that's dedicated to advancing childhood literacy through a social justice lens. Now, the organization is one of 15 community projects chosen to serve New York's 14th congressional district. Recently, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has requested federal funding for Star Lighthouse's Literacy Hub. And joining us now to share more details is Star Lighthouse's executive director and co-founder, Rena Mandahi, and also director of programming and curation and co-founder, Kachetta Gleason. And ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having thank us. You. We are so excited to be back here again, just to share some more exciting news regarding the organization and what we've been up to. Yeah, well, Rita, let's talk about it for a minute. I mean, obviously, an opportunity. We talked about federal funding uh, that's been requested, but bring us up to speed as to where things have been for Star Lighthouse. I mean, so as viewers may know, we are a 5-1-C-3 nonprofit organization that was founded during the height of the pandemic in response to widespread school and library closures and Last year, we became a New York City DOE vendor, so we were able to formally partner with schools for our programming, and we launched one of our latest initiatives, which is called our Literary Ventures Program, and that's where we're bringing in nationally recognized, award-winning BIPOC authors and artists who are leading in-person interactive workshops with our students. And the program, again, culminates in the building of a first-time home library for the students that are participating. And so we've grown to seven schools across the community, but we made a shocking discovery along the way, and that is that many of our schools, the library spaces are not operating. They're defunct and they're unused, and it's partially due to budget cuts that our school partners have experienced in light of the pandemic, and so now what we're shifting towards is creating literacy hubs. And that's essentially building a permanent home for our literacy programming so that we can service students every single day. And so let's bring Kachetta in and talk a little bit about servicing and programming. So as we talk about programming, walk us through what's, what's happening. Oh, the power of our programming has always come from the fact that we've listened to students. That has always, they have been our number one cheerleaders, our number one critics, and our number one advocates in terms of what they need because they know best in terms of students and spaces. And when working with seven schools this year, the main feedback we, bought, we got was we want more. Can you stay? Can you do more programs? Can we see more authors and illustrators? We want to do more shopping. So our literary adventure is, of course, our major program where we bring in authors and illustrators. And in every single visit, students always receive a book and that leads to a shopping experience. So in many cases, you'll have a week where a student will go from a home library of zero to a home library of five, where they have had a book from an author visit, an illustrator visit, and then a shopping experience. And the feedback we receive from schools and teachers as students taking independent time and always picking out the book they've chosen and reading. So this gives us the opportunity to really work with students day in and out in the, in the school spaces to be advocates for their own reading choices, to really measure what their choices are, how they're reflecting, how is their worldview opening up? It's not, it's not just windows, it's not just mirrors, it's the whole world. And they get to see themselves in it, especially for me as a Bronx native, my, the, my greatest joy in this job is letting the students shop for themselves and then I get to turn around and say, that's a Bronx author, that's a Bronx illustrator. And the way they look at you, their whole eyes light up, they just get so excited because they're not just seeing themselves, they're seeing their future. So yeah. this is us really working with them one on one and building that trust and that relationship and bringing and connecting students who are amazing and wonderful and honestly, the artists get the privilege of meeting them. That's the way it is. Yeah. Rita, I want to take a look at some statistics. I mean, I took a look at them and they really were startling. Uh, in the Bronx, there's only one age appropriate book available per 300 children across New York State. 47 percent of schools don't have libraries and there is less than one librarian for every 3,400 students. And so when we look at the work that your foundation is doing, it's really because there is this huge deficit when it comes to literacy in our students. Absolutely. And we're really aiming to take a multifaceted approach, especially when we think about literacy development. The work cannot be done alone by our organization. And that's why we're so intentional about working directly with our school partners and having candid conversations with teachers, administrators, family members, and caregivers to really understand what their needs are and where are these pain points and how can we 
leverage our programming to really be able to address the literacy crisis that we're facing in the community. Because the reality is, is that 70% of students in the Bronx are not reading proficiently today. And if we also take a look at the learning loss that they experienced throughout the pandemic, the stakes are high, and that's why it's so important for us to take a community-based approach when we're thinking about approaching literacy. Yeah, and Katrina, it's a good thing when students have an opportunity to really take these books, take them home, um, mm -hmm. and really be able to have an opportunity to develop their reading, read their reading skills. Talk to us about what you're finding through your programming and the results that it's producing. The results we're producing have been really interesting across because each school is unique and interesting in its own way. So we've had the privilege of working with seven schools and we're seeing jumps in attendance records. We're seeing jumps in student engagement across the virtual and in-person events. We're seeing also just students' endurance for reading, students' uh, lack of fear when it comes to reading. We're, we did a pilot recently, which we're gonna make permanent because we can't stop ourselves. We love it. We're second graders. We're working with second graders. Of course, they're entering a really critical year next year. They're entering testing in third grade. So we did 11 week pilot where every single week at nighttime, their parents, their abuelas, their little siblings were invited to join them where they read a book, they got home for their, for their own personal use and the author logged on to Zoom and they read the book together and they had the opportunity to ask questions, interact with an artist. And the beginning of the week, week one, week two, they, were, they had like a half hour endurance. They were excited, they were interested, they were polite. But around week five, they're, they're their uh, excuse me, attendance records jumped because they're talking about it amongst themselves. The younger siblings started joining, which was huge. That's when I knew it was fun for the kids. They were having a good time. And their endurance to sit for a half hour, the quality of their questions improved. Their engagement with literature, they're asking what's next week, what's coming, what can I look forward to? I want to read this to my mom. And like, can we have books in other languages? And then we started including Spanish bilingual books, Filipino books to make sure we're addressing home languages their engagement their self, comes down to self-selection. If you find every child has a book they're gonna love, we just have to find the book for them and make the connection. So it, and so it fills that gap, it goes from access, it becomes ownership, their own ownership. Yeah, Rena, I talked in the beginning of the interview about how uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is going to uh, call for some funding. Uh, talk to us about where that funding is gonna land and what that will do for you. I mean, this funding would transform our lives. It would change the lives of the students and the families as well as the school community that we're supporting. And so with this federal funding, it would allow us to establish a literacy hub, which would be a permanent home for our programming at PS214 in West Farms within the Bronx. And we've had such like incredible privilege of working with Principal David Citron and his school community at PS214. We actually ran an eight week literary residency with his students where we impacted every single child in that building, which is 939 students to be exact. And we distributed over 4,000 brand new multicultural books through that residency that we conducted. And the end result was that we want to be part of the school community every single day and be able to see every single student and the administrator was also on board. And so now we're embarking on this incredible partnership and journey. And with the Congresswoman's support, it can really allow our dreams to come into fruition. Yeah. So as with the, con the Congresswoman has given you the support, where does it stand now? And uh, where, what are we looking for? So that's a great question. So now the fact that the Congresswoman has selected us as one of the 15 community projects, well, now it goes to the House Appropriations Committee. And so the bill has to be passed within the House and the Senate. And then, of course, in an ideal world within politics, um, everything would be passed by September of this year. But that's really just contingent on when voting cycle takes place and if there's any delays along the way. So we could look at funding coming in as early as October of this year. Wow. Well, some things on. I know it's a gridlock in Washington, D.C., but, you know, there are some things that they seem to get along on. So hopefully this is one of the things that they can and we can see this happen to really better our neighborhood. Rita Kunshada, thank you so much for being with us here on the show. Thanks to thank you. Thank you so much.
All righty. Well, I want to let you know if you want more information, visit the website, starlighthouse.org. Then also follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Star Lighthouse. All right, we got more show. Don't go anywhere. Open is going to continue coming up right after this.